Now two minutes and counting. The status report indicates that everything is ready. The spacecraft is ready. A final check of the emergency detection system shows that it is also a go. The tanks are continuing to pressurize as we prepare to catch a break in the weather here at Cape Canaveral. There were thunderstorms this morning and there are expected to be heavy uh, storms tonight, but the afternoon has been relatively clear, somewhat cloudy, with moderate to light winds. This is the launch of the Titan Station Module 2 atop the Saturn 9A rocket, and we are still a go for launch. If all goes well, this module will meet Module 1 in orbit about 9 hours after launch. Module 1 was deployed to orbit on Tuesday. T minus 1 minute. Like Module 1, this module is right at the capacity limit for this launcher. It is actually a little bit lighter than Module 1 by about 2 tons, but still at about 18.5 tons. T minus 40 seconds and counting. The tanks are all pressurized now. We've passed the 30 second mark in the count. Twenty seconds, still a go. T minus fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we have liftoff. We have liftoff, and the rocket has cleared the tower. Liftoff of Titan Module 2 aboard the Saturn 9A rocket at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. As the onboard camera shows the rocket lifting off from Cape Canaveral in this gap in the weather. T plus 30 seconds, the rocket is at 1,380 meters, 100 meters per second. Breaking into the cloud layer now. Sixty seconds after launch, the rocket is at 6,600 meters, 278 meters per second. The rocket has passed Mach 1. So uh, later tonight, or if you'd like early Friday morning, we'll bring you a brief video of the docking procedure between Module 1 and Module 2. But there won't be too much to show there. As we pass 1 minute and 40 seconds after launch, the rocket is now at 28 kilometers, 868 meters per second, and 13 kilometers downrange. The 1 kilonewton thrusters aboard the second module of Titan Station have a delta V of 2000 meters per second for this module, so perhaps half of that for the current status of the station, but it takes two hours for them to produce that amount of Delta V, so, so we will not be expecting any grand course corrections from them. Okay, as we wait for first engine out, first stage is out, first stage separation is good, and the second stage is lit. The Saturn 9A rocket continues on its way to orbit. The rocket is now at 82 kilometers in altitude, 2,009 meters per second, and 87 kilometers downrange. 
we're expecting payload fairing separation here. There we go. First time that uh, payload fairing separation has occurred at the appointed time instead of at the same time as the first stage separation. Coming up on 3 minutes and 30 seconds after launch, we are at 132 kilometers in altitude, 2,149 meters per second, and 189 kilometers downrange. The science lab produ uh, produced for Module 2 was provided by Zephyrin Kerman's Warp Supplies Company on a deal that there would be uh, research sharing, and uh, Zephyrin Kerman also specified that the module should be named Scotty but uh, there is some some debate about that still we're trying to work out the negotiations on that portion of the deal but uh, all indications of that uh, this module will eventually be named Scotty once crew members reach the station and make it official a module one of course still has not been named and uh, we will wait to find out what kind of name it gets once the crew boards. Okay, T plus 4 minutes and 50 seconds. The rocket is at 188 kilometers in altitude, 2,589 meters per second in speed, and 390 kilometers downrange. Unlike the satellites that have been previously launched by, by the EDB, the station modules are controlled by a heavy computer core, leading to some speculation about what the computer core is for and why it is so heavy. Uh, there is some some concern that perhaps the EDB has installed it with a complex artificial intelligence and uh, this of course conjuring up images of 2001 A Space Odyssey and the HAL 9000 but the EDB assures us that whatever they've happened to installed into the computer core uh, it, it is not particularly intelligent The docking segment of this module has four Clampatron senior docking ports at a diameter of 2.5 meters apiece, and the Science Lab also has a similar docking port. And Werner von Kerman noted that it was lucky that they found so many lying by the side of the road to fit on this module, and they'll be glad to extend the station using 2.5 meter parts uh, to save cost. Of course, the docking port that connects Module 1 and Module 2 is a much larger 3.75 meter docking port provided by KW Rocketry. And that critical docking port, of course, was professionally made and at a certain expense. It will provide the stability through the central axis of the station. At this point, the rocket is now 253 kilometers in altitude, 5,700 meters per second in speed, and 1,458 kilometers downrange. The docking port on the Science Lab is due to receive a nuclear reactor, which of course has led to a great amount of protest, but uh, Again, Werner von Kerman, in his usual way, pointed out that since nobody wants nuclear reactors in their backyard, the best thing to do with them would probably be to send them into space. When a reporter commented that space is everybody's backyard, uh, Werner von Kerman uh, smiled and noted, 
well, just try going out there to get a breath of fresh air. Waiting for a second stage shutdown here. It will be a shutdown. The second stage will not burn out completely. And that is because not only is the payload lighter than the full capacity of the rocket, but also the intended orbit has to be lower than the orbit of module one. And in fact, the second stage will be planned to deorbit. And so the rocket is not currently in orbit at this point as the second stage is shut down. We await payload separation. There is no camera aboard this module. There was a brief flame from the rocket. Uh, we have payload separation and the one kilonewton thrusters on the payload seem to be pushing it away from the second stage successfully. So no worry about the brief flame that we saw from the second stage, still some curiosity about what happened there. So the second stage will be returning to the atmosphere to burn up, while the one kilonewton rockets are now placing the payload into orbit. This will be a fairly long burn, after all the, the rockets have two hours of burn time. Reports are that the payload was delivered to a slightly incorrect inclination and will require a lengthy inclination burn as well, but that's not what's happening at this point. The inclination burn will require about 25 minutes of burn time, so it's a substantial correction. And will probably be done in multiple inclination burns uh, as the module makes its way to meet up with module 1. Okay, here we should be seeing the end of this particular burn. And there we have it. So, Titan Module 2 is now in orbit and awaiting to meet up with its partner, Module 1. And then the core of Titan Station will be complete and the next mission will bring up supplies to the station. And once the supply mission is successful and we can see that the station can be properly supplied with the necessities of life, uh, we expect it to be crewed and so the crewed mission will follow that. Lacking onboard cameras will show you a projection of Titan Module 2 in orbit as it is now time for us to sign off. We hope you enjoyed this broadcast of the launch of Titan Module 2 to orbit and with that this is the EDB hoping that you'll join us for all of our future missions. Thank you for watching.